This all started a couple of days ago when I was browsing through Marketplace, scrolling through the ATV quad bike section and managed to find a fully refurbished, re retired, more like lightly used, actually. But I decided that this was the four-wheeler that I was going to make electric, so I started removing all the parts that I didn't need. A quick wash and what felt like putting makeup on a pig later. We transitioned to adding new valve stems, which wasn't so easy. But eventually I managed to break the tire bead and filled it back to 20 psi. And after adding all the tires, I flipped it on its side and started working on the motor mount. This is the 42 kilowatt monstrosity. Yes, that's a maximum amperage of 350 at 120 volts. Even though I only have batteries that can supply that amount of power at 48 volts. The speed controller is also limited to 48 volts, so that would have to be upgraded for part 2. The motor mount was made with these aluminium extrusions hooked onto the steel frame at multiple places. I then tried to spin up the motor, but it just wouldn't work. It did spin, but holy fuck, that sounded awful. Thank you Woodpeck Studio for sponsoring the video. Woodpeck Studio makes wooden world maps and lets you choose the size. The largest one being 3 meters wide, which is as large as the 3D printed map. They also laser edge details like names of the countries and capitals. This is the world map with varying thickness and stained wood. It was even fun to put up on the wall and the reviews of this place looks good too. So check it out in the description below and use the coupon code ARSELIFON for 10% off. Kind of wants to rotate, but doesn't really do it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are we getting closer? No, we weren't. So expensive speed controller out and cheap EC goes in. <laughs> Alright, we are missing a lot of parts. The speed controller is far too small. The twist throttle that goes on the handle, I don't have it. But hey, it should work. This is a 3D printed hub that joins the motor and the chain gear. It's using aluminium spacers to allow the chain not to hit the plastic. There are six screws joining the gears to the plastic to distribute the forces. And with everything in place, it was finally time to test it. Since I have a radio controlled throttle, I could do things like this. The b is the lack of a censored speed controller and not high enough mechanical advantage in the gearing. The chain was also very loose, which made a lot of noise. I decided to make a new 3D printed hub with an extruded part as the aluminium spacers didn't keep the gear 100% straight. I repositioned the motor so the chain would be significantly tighter and I added a container for the water cooling. I just drilled a hole for the 12 volt water pump with PVC tubing that goes to the electric speed controller. With the compartment for the batteries, all the boxes have been checked, nothing could go wrong.
<laughs> At this point everything was actually working really well. See, because of the gears, it doesn't have a whole lot of torque. We only have a 35 tooth gear on the back tires and an 11th gear on the motor. 3.2 ratio, and so we have a lot of torque, we have a lot of top speed, but it doesn't have a, enough power to start me from this kind of gradient, so. Now, the start is really slow and it's mainly because of two reasons. We have a ratio of a little more than three, we should have a ratio of maybe five, six, seven. So the start is gonna be really slow because the motor doesn't have enough power, doesn't have enough gearing to make the wheels turn properly. Now, the second thing is that we're using a censored brushless motor with an uncensored EEC. So the EEC, the electric speed controller, doesn't know where the motor is. It's just supplying the power. We don't have that smooth rotation in the beginning. So check this out. Yeah, the brakes. Now, there's actually a third thing, and that's the fact that we're using 24 volts. Now, I'm using the exact same batteries as on the electric surfboard and the electric snow racer in my last video. It's two of these LiPo 8 amp hours 24 volt batteries, and they are even connected in a parallel connection, meaning we're only running this at 24 volts, a system that is capable of running at 120 volts, which is just insane. Now, I barely have any brakes. The throttle is radio controlled. I'm quite literally sitting on my batteries. It didn't fit the box and I don't have a radiator for my cooling, so... Uh, room for improvement. The electronics are really simple, I just made it complicated. This is a 7 volt battery, it goes to this plug, and that goes to the water pump inside this barrel, as well as the receiver. And this is just a BEC to take the 7 volt battery down to 5 volts for the receiver. So there's that, it just plugs in like this. Oh, now this is a Y splitter for the EEC and I just plug in both my batteries in here. We could add two serial connections and add additional two batteries to the system and make a 48 volt 16 amp hour battery. It's way larger, but I want to make sure that it works on 24 volts first. I went all... I too was highly skeptical about 3D printing anything to this, but the 3D printed adapter that goes between the motor and the gear. I am under immense pressure. But now we're gonna do the switch, putting all the batteries in a serial and parallel connection. So these two will be in series, these two will be in series, and then these two packs individually will be packed into a serial connection. Fuck me, that's a parallel connection. Possibly it will have more initiative torque, so it will be easier to start it from a standstill. But that's just my idea. We'll see how it goes. No, it's not easier. It's just the very first turns. Yes, I also fixed the brakes so they work.
With everything working so great, I knew it wasn't long till something was about to catch fire, so I connected all the batteries to my disposal to see the range, but I ended up testing how hard I could push it. I did that by going as fast as possible, up a 400 meter hill from start to end, which is a 25 meter height difference. At this moment, I was going about 60% throttle. Fully charged batteries would last 4.8 minutes at this discharge. So while going up the steepest part of the hill, I decided to slow down slightly. Unfortunately, the waveform was broken, so you can't hear it. But notice the quad was slowing down without my input, which is why I looked down at the speed controller when it suddenly turned into a fireball. Whoa! <laughs> Jesus! Family friendly. Is there a way for me to disengage the motor? Well, it might help to cut one of the wires to disconnect the regenerative braking. Oh, come on. Come on, come on. Yes. Oh, gosh. Thank you. Luckily, gravity could help me most of the way back, so that wasn't a big deal. But for part two, I'm gonna have to open up my wallet and spend another grand on new parts like the new EC is probably gonna run me about six seven hundred dollars and that's a 500 amp preferably up to 120 volts so we could also get much larger batteries uh, higher voltage and especially higher capacity so we can go further than you know 4.8 minutes but that's it for today's video go ahead and leave a like it tends to make the videos a bit more popular so I would very much appreciate it See you. Bye.